Good morning, happy Tuesday. It is Tuesday the 16th. I had to check my watch because I had no idea what day it actually is. Um, <laughs> and I'm about to go out on a little mid-morning run. Um, I've had a couple meetings this morning. Um, I decided to use this time. I have like two hours before my next meeting or a little under two hours before my next meeting. So I decided to squeeze my run in now. I think I'm gonna shoot for a five mile run. The weather is starting to warm up a little bit. Um, it's gonna start going into the high 80s, low 90s here towards the end of this week. So um, I'm gonna try and get out now. And then like later this week, my runs will probably have to be in the morning or like later in the evening. So I'm gonna go get my run in. I was laughing because to myself because I feel very Florida right now. Um, today is actually uh, general registration day for the 2021 Princess Half Marathon weekend. So I decided to wear my Cinderella shirt from this year's Princess Half. Um, and then I also, before I went out, I was like, I need to get a hat because it's really, really sunny out. So I got my Florida Marathon hat on. So I'm just feeling very Florida right now. <laughs> I sent a picture to my parents. Hopefully they enjoy it. Um, but yeah, enough blabbing. Let's get running. Let's get five miles in and then enjoy the rest of our day. And just like that, five miles are done. I felt pretty good through the first few and I feel like I was going pretty fast. Um, and then about like halfway through the run, my legs started feeling really heavy and crampy. Um, so I think I, I really am doing so terrible about stretching and rolling and stuff. Uh, these past few weeks, even though like my legs have been in pain. So I think I need to start, <laughs> I've always needed to be serious about it, but I really need to start being serious about it because I'm really nervous I'm gonna injure myself. I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna shower, I'm gonna roll out and then I'm gonna shower. I do have a meeting at one o'clock and then after my one o'clock meeting, I might do the therapy gun on my calves. Um, because, and my feet, like my calves and my feet, really all my <laughs> lower body, but my calves and my feet are hurting right now and cramping up right now. Um, so I think that's gonna be the plan. I gotta be better. Somebody needs to hold me accountable. Brett tries, I give him credit. He definitely says you need to take care of your body <laughs> like every single day, but I'm stubborn and I don't listen to him and I'm, that's my fault. That's all on me. <laughs> so um, I gotta hold myself accountable. To actually do that but five miles done feels good it is so gorgeous out today it's gonna get really hot I can feel it in the air the humidity is coming so I'm glad that I got five miles in but for the rest of the week if I'm running I have to run in the morning because it's gonna get harder and harder to run outside I'm sure good morning I am currently in a drive-through line for Dunkin Donuts um, I haven't seen a drive through line. I honestly haven't been like going out too much um, to get coffee since quarantine has begun. Um, I'll do it like maybe once or two t twice a week, which is a huge difference between me doing it every single day when I just have a normal work schedule. Um, so I don't really see too many drive through lines, but I'm sitting in one now. It's quite long, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Woke up this morning not feeling great. Mentally, m mornings tend to be difficult for me, for whatever reason. And today was difficult. Um, I had a meeting at 8.30, which was energizing. I'm um, talking a lot about uh, creating programs uh, for social justice education for our students, um, which is always energizing. Um, so I'm looking forward to start working on those a little bit more. And then I have a whole afternoon just like chock full of back-to-back -back meetings. Like my calendar looks disgusting. <laughs> like I hate when that happens, especially when it's like Zoom meetings. Like it's one thing to have like in-person meetings with everybody, uh, but like back-to-back -back Zoom meetings are just so draining for me. Um, so I'm not looking forward to this afternoon. So I'm getting some coffee. I think I'm gonna get a donut too because I feel like I want a donut. And then I am going back home. I have to listen to a podcast for my one-on-one -on -one with my direct supervisor. 
Um, so I'm gonna go and listen to that and just chill. Maybe I'll chill outside and listen to it. That feels like something that would be fun to do. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna sit outside. It's definitely like a summer day today. It's definitely getting there. It's definitely almost summertime. Isn't Saturday the 20th? or the 21st or one of these days here in June is the first day of summer. So I'm really looking forward to that. I love summer so much. So happy that it's finally here. But anyway, that's how I'm doing this morning. I've noticed that I am, I usually, like lately I've been taking like one or two clips a day. Um, so I'm gonna try to, you know, show you more of my day. Um, like this, today's maybe not the best example of what I do typically in a day. Um, because I just have so many meetings this afternoon, but, um, I don't have any meetings tomorrow, so I'm going to do some work. So maybe I'll show you like what my typical work from home day looks like tomorrow. Brett made me a little bit of a lunch. I got some, uh, scrambled eggs and this is like the inside of the burrito that I had for dinner last night. Um, I only ate half of it, but I'm going to eat this. Get some fuel for this long afternoon of meetings, watching some YouTube, getting prepped for all my meetings. I also think I got a little bit of a burn. I sat outside for like an hour and a half and I did not wear sunscreen, which is not smart, but shoulders are a little red and a little hot. So. In the comfort of our apartment, <laughs> hiding from the sun. Good morning, it is Thursday morning. Um, it's the 18th today. <laughs> uh, I had to really think about what day it was. Um, but it's about quarter to eight. Um, and I said yesterday that I would be taking you guys through what a day of working from home is like for me. Today I do not have any meetings, so <laughs> it's not a usual working from home kind of day. I do usually have at least like three or four meetings on my calendar every day um, but because I don't have any meetings on my calendar today I thought I'd show you what I do for work when I'm at home so I'm not putting anybody on camera or like <laughs> talking about my meetings that are work related so our work day starts at 8 um, sometimes if I don't have a meeting right at 8 o'clock I'll like let myself you know start a little bit later um, it all just kind of depends on like how I'm feeling when I wake up, things like that, um, and like what my responsibilities for the day are. Um, but because I don't have any meetings or anything like that, I figured I'd just get the day started right off the bat. And the first thing I'll do is I'll get up, I'll try to change out of my pajamas <laughs> into something else. I tend to wear something a little bit more comfortable. Um, I wear a lot of leggings. <laughs> Um, or shorts or something like that. Now that the weather's heating up today, I'm wearing um, just kind of like spaghetti strap tank top. You can see I got a sunburn yesterday from sitting outside um, and a maxi skirt. So it's really, really comfortable. Um, and I feel like I'm not just sitting in my pajamas all day, um, which can, you know, not, it sounds comfortable in theory. <laughs> Um, but it always feels good to put like clean clothes on. And then I'll usually come into the kitchen and I'll make myself some coffee and some breakfast. Um, sometimes I'll decide to go out and get coffee like you saw me do yesterday. Um, but today I think I'm just gonna have my coffee here. Um, I haven't decided between an iced coffee or a regular coffee. I think I might do an iced coffee because it's a little muggy out today. Um, and then I tried to drink some water which I'm okay at drinking water. I'm not like the most terrible, but I'm also not the best at drinking water. So I'm like pretty average at drinking water, but I'm gonna try and drink some water today. My stomach has been bothering me for the last couple of days, so I wanna make sure I'm hydrating. Um, and then I'll make myself some breakfast. Um, I'll usually put on some YouTube to watch while I am preparing for the day. Um, so let's do some breakfast and uh, get the day started. Okay, so I have my iced coffee. I have my breakfast, which is an English muffin. I have butter on one side and peanut butter on the other. I was just hoping to do butter. What I'll usually do is I'll take the butter pats and just like put them on the English muffin and like fold it, like close it like a sandwich so it melts, but it only melted on one side. Um, so I put peanut butter on the other side and then I have some strawberries. 
Um, usually the first thing I do when I start work is I'll open up my email just to see like if there's anything urgent that came through um, and I'll also check my calendar to like remember which what times my meetings are at and like if there's anything that got put on my calendar since the day before that I didn't see. Um, obviously like I said I don't have anything on my calendar today so I didn't really have to worry about that. I double checked to make sure. Um, so I'm just gonna, you know, respond to some emails that came in after work ended last night, um, and then I'll get started on my list, which I'll show you in a bit. Okay, so as you guys know, I use a bullet journal. I say it's a bullet journal, it's really a notebook. I do not use the bullet journal method whatsoever, but <laughs> I use a notebook to like keep track of a lot of my plans and my to-do list items and things like that. Um, it's just really helpful for me to have a place where I can just like jot things down that I need to do or need to remember or things like that. Um, so that's really how I stay on top of all of my to-do list items. I'm gonna show you what list I'm working off of for today. So I try to do like a weekly to-do list that is like more larger scale projects that I need to get done or that I'm pulling forward from other weeks. Um, so that like if they don't really correspond to a certain day or they're things that I'm like waiting for other people to get back to me on, um, I can just keep them here and they can happen at some point during this week. Um, I, this is only four days. <laughs> so we, we work in the summer from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. four days a week um, and we have Fridays off. So that's why it's only four days for the week. But here's the list of the things that I'm working on. Um, a lot of it has to do with just like these really big projects we've been working on, like annual report. Um, we're working on acquiring a software that I'm head of the project on um, so I, and we're like this close to like closing in on that project and having it done. I need to like start with our implementation plan so that's like a big thing I need to work on today. Some items that I need to like review things like that so that's on this weekly to-do list but I also do dailies. Um, so <laughs> here's my notes from yesterday. Um, they're kind of like all over the place, but like I'll have like some to-do boxes um, that if they didn't make it onto my weekly to-do list, they're still like floating in here. Um, so sometimes I'll have to like search through my dailies um, and like look at what else I need to do. Um, so I'm kind of working off of this list and these two pages here um, in the purple. This gray page is supposed to be today. I'm actually like flip-flopping what I'm doing in the afternoon with what I'm doing in the morning. Um, so I'll be doing this later on today because I'm feeling really productive right now. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of like how I'm like organizing. I, I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but it makes sense in my brain. So what I'm doing right now is I'm working off of those two lists to get some of these tasks done. I'm probably gonna do that for the next couple hours or so and try to get as many of these items done as possible until I feel like I'm in a good place to like end the week um, and go into the, like we have three day weekends every week. Um, so go into the three day weekend feeling like I'm not gonna be totally caught off guard on Monday. Um, so that's the plan for this morning. Um, things might change this afternoon depending on how far along I get this morning, but because I don't have any meetings interrupting my like kind of flow, I'm hoping that I can just get through a lot of these items and be like done probably by like early afternoon. That's the hope. <laughs> Um, and then usually, like like I said, we work until 5.30. Um, if I finish up my tasks for the day, um, I let myself, you know, not like physically be working. I think that's totally fine as long as I'm still available either by phone or by email and I'm like just checking in just to like make sure that I'm not missing anything. <laughs> that's what works best for me. And Let's, let's just dive into this list. to one 
honestly, I'm feeling really good about how productive I've been today. Um, and I'm feeling like I'm at a good kind of ending place um, for my work for the day. Um, I might pop back in and work on like maybe one more document. But other than that, I feel like I crushed it this morning. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook um, some lunch for Brett and I. Um, and then figure out what to do with the rest of the day. So it's just after four, it's like 4.15, um, and I am outside in the backyard. Um, Brett and I just spent the last couple hours watching the last few episodes of The Great on Hulu. We totally binged the first season. Um, I It was so entertaining. Um, if you are looking for like something that is kind of dramedy, that's like really like colorful and like entertaining. I totally recommend The Great if you haven't watched it yet. It's on Hulu. It's about Catherine the Great and her rise to power in Russia. Um, and I just, we just really enjoyed it. Um, we cannot wait for the next season to come out. Um, it ends on like a huge cliffhanger. Obviously it's like based on history. So like you can probably figure out what happened. <laughs> Um, and there's a lot of historical inaccuracies, but you know, it's there for entertainment. So we really enjoyed it. We really had a good time watching it. Um, so now I'm in the backyard. I have set up my backyard paradise here. Um, I have my three different beverages that I always have at least, I have to have like multiple beverages for some reason. Um, I have uh, water, a Gatorade, and a seltzer. I have my snack, salt and vinegar chips if I get a little hungry and I have my Kindle and my physical book um, so I think what I'm gonna try to do over the next couple of hours is read close to 100 150 pages of happy and you know it which is the physical book um, and then at some point today I would also like to read a chapter of how to be an anti-racist still kind of making my way through that um, and just really kind of enjoy this hot summer weather in the shade <laughs> so that's the plan for the next few hours um eventually i'll get up and um, start making dinner and stuff but i got some time to kill it's the weekend more tiger king <laughs> this is so funny good morning it is friday June 19th. Happy Juneteenth if you do not know what Juneteenth is um it is the uh, commemorative date of the freedom of the slaves. Um, I'm gonna put some information about Juneteenth in the description. Um, I recommend you read up on uh, this piece of history, piece of American history, um, and I am a huge advocate of this being an actual federal holiday. I would love to see that happen uh, because myself didn't really know about Juneteenth until a couple of years ago. This isn't something that is necessarily celebrated in our country, even though it should be. Um, and I think there's a really big push right now for it to become a federal holiday. So, but yes, happy Juneteenth. Um, I hope that you guys spend the day or this will go up after Juneteenth, but you have, you spent the day, um, you know, continuing to donate, sign petitions, advocate for racial justice, um, and, you know, support black owned creators and black owned businesses and all the things that we should be doing on a daily basis anyway. Um, but just make sure that you are, you know, I'm hoping that you're remembering to do that today especially. As you can tell from my sweatiness, I just got back from a run. It's only 8.40 in the morning. <laughs> it is so humid. Um, I got myself up around like 6.30, uh, got out the door around 7.30 and just ran six miles and I'm so sweaty that it's going into my eyes. So that's how you know it's summertime. <laughs> Definitely summertime. Today again is a day off so um, I am going to Go inside, shower, hydrate, eat some breakfast, um, and I think I'm gonna hopefully spend the day just reading. Um, I would, like I said, uh, like to read more of How to Be an Anti-Racist. I wanna read a couple chapters of that today. Um, I read about a little under 100 pages yesterday of Happy and You Know It. Um, wasn't as productive when I went and sat outside um, as I wanted to be because my neighbor, our like neighbor behind us, decided to start pulling vines off the fence that separates our yards and it was really noisy. So I came inside 
um, and it was just really hot so I didn't have as much concentration as I wanted to. I want to try and finish Happy and You Know It today um, because tomorrow is a round of Read Your Face Off. Yesterday I created a uh, Discord channel for the Read Your Face Off book club in an attempt to like have us create more of a community for that book club but hopefully you saw the link on our twitter page and i'm going to con continue to leave the link um in my description from now on so you can always go over and join the read your face off discord whenever you want to um because we'll not only be talking during readathons or uh, during buddy reads but we'll just be talking all the time so i'm excited about it but i'll show you it a little bit later but right now let's go inside let's hydrate let's uh, shower <laughs> get the sweat off of me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I literally just got a notification that uh, Ariel and Raylene just posted the Reading Rush announcement. Um, so I'm gonna pop over to YouTube and watch it right now, like seconds after they posted it. I don't, I doubt there's challenges or anything like that, but it'll be good to know like what dates the Reading Rush will be happening. I usually try to like loosen up my July TBR a little bit because I know the reading rush usually happens in July, so it'll be nice to like actually know when it will be happening. So let's type it in. It's time. Oh, it's ten it's minutes long. I'm rush. going to um, pause this and watch it, and then give you my reactions. <laughs> I thought it was just going to be like a two-minute video announcing when it is, uh, but it's ten minutes long. So I'll check in with you guys in a second. All right. So it looks like we have a date for reading rush, which is the twentieth. Of July through the 26th of July so about a month away um, and a lot of the video is talking about you know their merchandise how reading rush works like their website um, their read-ins things like that um, so like I predicted not um, about the reading challenges which everybody I think can agree is the most exciting part of Reading Rush announcements. But I'm excited. I'm excited to actually participate this year. Uh, last year, I think I participated for like two days, um, but I couldn't keep up with it. As you all know, I wasn't in a good mental space during that time last year. So I'm excited to actually have a good Reading Rush this year. Um, I'm thinking, I'm not sure when I'm going to get called back to like actually be working in the office. It doesn't really sound like it's anytime soon. Um, so there may be a chance that I'm still working from home <laughs> during the reading rush. Um, but I think I'm going to try and do daily vlogs that week um, instead of a weekly vlog. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm looking forward to it regardless. I'm going to mark my calendar. Um, and it's gonna be a good time. It's always a good time. So one of our favorite Japanese places just opened back up. So we got some for dinner. I got some sushi and Brett ordered a hibachi dinner. So that's going to be super delicious. I'll show you what we got. First of all, they drew this cute smiley face on our bag. <laughs> So here's Brett's hibachi dinner. It's pretty decently sized. You got your veggies, your meats, shrimp. It comes with a salad. They gave him the hibachi sauces. And it comes with a soup, but it's mushroom soup and uh, Brett doesn't like mushrooms, so I'm probably gonna eat that. And then I got, um, this is called the sweetheart roll, which is salmon, spicy salmon, spicy tuna, and avocado, and then the sweet potato rolls, which is just like sweet potato tempura, and some soy sauce. Super pumped to get into this. It's gonna be delicious. Good morning. It is Saturday, the 20th, um, and today is Read Your Face Off Day. Um, it's a June 24 hour readathon. Um, it's 9.07, so I'm already seven minutes behind. Classic. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to quickly check in and let you know what I'm planning to read. I did post my TBR on my blog earlier this week, um, but because I didn't get everything I wanted to get read, read last night, um, I still have some other things that I want to like also read in addition to the things that I posted on my blog post. So um, we have, the first thing I'm going to dive into is Happy and You Know It by Laura Hankin. Um, I have about 50 pages or so left of this 
So this will be the first thing I read so I can finish that up. I also have um, How to Be an Anti-Racist. I want to read another chapter of this on my Kindle. I feel like every time I pick that book up, I'm learning something different or like seeing a different perspective, which is totally what is needed when you're learning about anti-racism work and social justice work. Um, so I'm really enjoying this book. Um, I'm trying to, like I, I've been mentioning, I've been trying to read it really slowly. So I think I'm just gonna read one chapter today. Um, and then I have the other two books that I posted on my blog. Um, I would like to read November Road by Lou Burney. Um, I've started this book already, <laughs> but I started it back in November. So it's been a while since I picked it up, but I remember I really enjoyed the first few chapters. Um, and then I think I'm also going to read Beach Read by Emily Henry. Um, one of the folks, Rachita, I, I hope I'm saying your name right, Rachita, on our Discord is reading this today as well. So I think we're gonna try and buddy read this a little bit today. Um, so that is the plan for reading today. Um, right now, I need to just get my life together. <laughs> um, we went and we got some donuts from the cake bar. We have a Oreo one, a strawberry frosted one, and then um, we had a maple bacon one that Brett ate because I don't eat pork products, but it's always yummy that, and he really likes those, so I picked one up for him. Um, I have my coffee and I have um, a breakfast sandwich. Breakfast sandwich. Um, so I have some breakfast that I'm gonna munch on for a little bit. I'm gonna post on Twitter that I'm starting my readathon, and then I'm gonna start my readathon. Okay, so it's 10.40, and I just finished first book of the day. Just finished Happy and You Know It by Laura Hankin. Um, I will review this for you at the end of the vlog. Um, but it feels good to have a book done. Um, I read about, I think there was like 60 pages, I think a total of 60 pages left of this book that I read. Um, so 60 pages in for the day, which is exciting. I think the next book that I'm gonna go for is Bee Tree by Emily Henry. Like I said, um, Rachita is uh, reading this and we're gonna kind of like buddy read it. She's already started. So I have some catching up to do. <laughs> I think she's probably like, if I were to guess, she's like 40 or so pages into it already. Um, so this will be the next thing I pick up. But happy to have a book done already. It's always good to like start off a readathon by like finishing up a book you're already in the middle of because then it just like gives you motivation to like keep going. So it's 3.30. Um, so that means we're six and a half hours into the readathon. I took a little break starting at three. Um, what I'm gonna do now is make some guacamole so I can have a little bit of a snack and just kind of chill from reading for a little bit. Maybe I think I'm gonna try and aim to start reading again at four o'clock, but I just need a little break. Um, but I'm gonna make some guac. I'm gonna watch The Hills because that's what I've been watching on Hulu because I'm trash. Um, and, you know, just give my eyes a little bit of a rest. Um, but I am about 125 pages into Beach Read, and I'm really enjoying it. It's a really nice, light-hearted read, and it's, like, perfect um, for, you know, just having something a little bit happier to enjoy. Let's make some guac. Good morning. It is Sunday. It is Father's Day. So happy Father's Day, particularly to my dad, but to all the dads out there and to all the dads who play the dad role. You guys are amazing. I think later this morning we're going to be doing a little Zoom call, me and my family, just to say happy Father's Day to my dad. Um, it is 6 11 a.m. I've been up since about 5.20. I hit snooze a couple times. My alarm went off at five, but I've been awake since like 5.20 um, because I am gonna go and try to run 10 miles. I did my usual thing of trying, my brain trying to talk me out of it, 
given myself a lot of excuses. Um, I have a pretty wild case of plantar fasciitis right now. I think I've talked about this a little bit in a couple of vlogs ago. Um, it's been like, it's in both my feet. Um, and some days it's my left foot that is bothering me more. And some days it's my right foot. Um, right now it's my right foot. But yeah, it's, it's really painful. I was off my feet pretty much the whole day yesterday and my right heel was just throbbing all day long so my brain is like you should be off of it you should be resting it um i've been like looking it up and i know other runners who deal with plantar fasciitis too who continue to run on it so i'm gonna continue to run on it um, i'm actually wearing my brooks adrenalines today um i lately have been wearing my nikes and i'm gonna see if wearing my brooks is gonna make any difference. I don't know why I just keep gravitating towards my Nike wind flows, but I never really had like big plantar fasciitis problems until recently. Um, I would get it here and there, but like this has been like a really nagging case of it. Um, so, and I only started wearing those Nikes a few months ago. So I'm wondering if it's that has anything to do with it. I'm sure it has to do with, you know, tight muscles and all of that too, but I switched back to my Brooks for this run. Um, and I also have my knobby compression socks on and I'm hoping that those help too. Um, I do want to get some more compression socks. It's really funny. My friend Cassie, who is also a Bib Brave Pro, just, it, she's on a compression socks promotion campaign right now. I don't remember what the brand is, but she was sent like, 40 pairs of compression socks. And I was just about to like invest in a couple pairs um, for myself. But she FaceTimed me the other day and she's like, I have so many pairs of compression socks. Do you want any? Um, and now I don't have to worry about buying them. So I'll probably pick up a couple more pairs, but I'm gonna see if um, wearing these socks makes any difference in how I feel when I'm running. But yeah, let's um, get out the door. It's 6.14 am um and let's go get this run in before the sun comes out and kills us all hello i am back from my run very clearly i've showered um i've already had our father's day zoom call with my family eating breakfast and it's 11 13 a.m and i feel like i have done everything i need to do today um i'm feeling very accomplished I'm also feeling very tired. Um, my feet are already starting to flare up a little bit. So what I'm doing right now is I'm sitting in our bedroom. We just put the AC in yesterday, so it's like nice and cool in here. Um, so I'm sitting in here and I am planning to edit last week's vlog, which I haven't done yet, um, and see if I can get that together and uploaded over the next couple of hours. And then I'm just gonna chill, maybe take a little nap because I'm feeling really sleepy. I think later today I want to go to the grocery store, get some groceries for the week, do the sink full of dishes that we've been ignoring. <laughs> um, so it's it's gonna be a chill Sunday and just like a productive way to like get ready for the week. But yeah, that's the plan. Wanna check in? Ooh, I also wanted to tell you, um, while I was out for, let me back up. Yesterday, I ended up actually reading all of Beach Read by Emily Henry, and I loved it. It has been so long since I've actually read a full book in one day, um, and this is great. This has been getting a lot of really positive reviews, and I agree with them. This is a really great book. Um, I will talk more about this later when I wrap up my reading, but finished that for Read Your Face Off. And then this morning while I was out running, it was still read your face off technically. So I decided to listen to a little bit of an audiobook while I was out running. Um, so I read Akata Witch um, by Nidhi Akorafor. And I picked this one up from Scribd because I was watching Reagan's latest reading vlog and she was reading it and I was thinking I have a 10 mile run, I'd like to do some reading. Um, so I listened to the first seven and a half chapters of that book. And it's been a really interesting read so far. Um, it's a 
YA fantasy set in Nigeria. Um, the main character is um, a, she lives in a Nigerian family. She lives in Nigeria, but she was born in the United States um, and also has albinism. So she, in many ways, she kind of is like the person that stands out in her family. Um, and obviously that she faces her own set of challenges. And then she discovers that she has magical powers, which is really awesome. Um, it's like I said, I'm only seven and a half chapters in, um, really enjoying it so far though. So lots of, lots of reading happened during this read your face off. It's been a long time since I <laughs> read that much during a 24 hour readathon, but I'm really proud of myself. So I think I might continue reading today. I think I might read some of November Road. But we're just gonna see how I feel. Maybe I don't feel like reading today because I read all day yesterday. Who knows? <laughs> At DC Public Schools. I'm so excited to introduce today's panel, which is really centered on elevating the voices of our young women of color and having an authentic conversation about their education experience. And so when we met to prepare for this, I asked all of the students to tell me about themselves. We are still spending time with them trying to help me say their name. And uh, so I said to them, it may take me three or four times asking you to say your name, uh, charge it to my head and not my heart if I get it wrong. But I think it's important for us to build that value and it starts just with a name. Hello everyone, um, it is Monday? Is it really only Monday? Uh, the 22nd, I believe. I don't even know anymore. Having another sad day. Been having more of those than usual lately. Um, and I don't think it's hard to point to a reason to be sad, <laughs> but trying to push through. Uh, today at work, I, I'm actually participating in a free um, social justice institute virtual institute um, that's put on by American University. I had three different sessions um, today. I think there's a couple there's a couple more tomorrow that I'm going to try to go to and there's a couple more on Wednesday that I'm going to try to go to. Um, the theme of the institute is uh, supporting women and girls of color in education. It's been a really positive experience um, listening to all the speakers and everything. But even outside of that. I've been feeling a little bummed today. I've been feeling a little bummed pretty much all like weekend. Um, trying to fight through it. Trying to fight through it. Um, but I am gonna go to Target um, because I haven't been out to a store other than the grocery store in like three months. <laughs> so I thought I would go over to Target and I wanted to like look at the clothes. There's some clothes that I like need to pick up. I don't, I'm not like really wanting to go shopping for clothes that often that aren't like running related. Um, so I'm gonna go see if I can pick some stuff up. Speaking of clothes, I actually got this in the mail, which is um, this tank top. Bib Brave did a series a few weeks ago, limited edition uh, shirt series uh, for Pride Month. Um, and so I decided to go ahead and purchase one. Um, it's like a mint green tank top. They usually only do orange um, merch. Um, so I wanted to, you know, hop on and get some of their non-orange merch. And they have like their uh, logo in rainbow, which is like really, really cool. Um, I'll definitely be wearing this probably on my run tomorrow. Love it. But yeah, I'm gonna head over to Target check it out feel like I'm living somewhat of a normal life and then I'm coming home <laughs> hello it is Tuesday the 23rd um, and I forgot to wrap up the vlog yesterday um, so I figured I would wrap it up now don't have much going on today I just need to get a lot of work done so vlog would have been boring today anyway um, I do have a couple sessions for that conference um, that I'm attending or that Institute I'm attending um, there's one in a couple minutes so I'm gonna try to make this speedy and I do need to go on a run today is my first day of Chicago training I feel like I've expressed this here a few times. I've definitely expressed it on my blog, but I'm not super confident that Chicago will actually happen. 
but I'm gonna train for it like it's going to until I can't train anymore. So I'm gonna go on a three mile run today. 2.23 of those miles are going to be dedicated to Ahmad Arbery. Ahmad's family uh, just announced the other day that they're going to be doing the I Run With Mod virtual runs every month on the 23rd until his murderers are prosecuted. So I'm definitely gonna be participating in that. I'm gonna do 2.23 for him um, and you know, kind of do a lot of reflecting on that part of my run. If you want more information, I'll put it in the description, um, but I think it's a really good way to honor his life, reflect on um, racial injustice in our country, um, and just, you know, reflect on ways that we can be good allies. So that will happen today as well. Um, and then I have to get some workshop. I'm actually building up an allyship workshop for our students. Um, so I'm going to be working on that today as well. So let's get started. <laughs> um, before I sign off, I'm going to talk to you about the books that I finished this weekend during the Read Your Face Off Readathon. The first book I finished was Happy and You Know It by Laura Hankin. Um, this is a contemporary about upper class moms in New York um, and kind of like the dark seedy underbelly of, um, you know, interpersonal dynamics. Um, there's lots of discussion of marriage, what it means to be a mom, um, what it means to be like a perfect Instagram mom and like how that compares to reality, discussion of leaving old lives behind things along those lines. It was pretty enjoyable. Um, it, it, I feel like it was really slow across the first like 200 pages or so. Um, it really kind of picks up like there's a lot of exposition in this so you have to learn a lot about the characters before you really get to like the juicy juicy parts. So the last hundred and like 50 or so pages were really really juicy and fun to read um, but it did take a while for it to get there so um, because it had a little bit of a slower beginning I'm gonna end up giving this three stars. Did really enjoy it. Like Laura Hankins writing style I'd probably pick up another by her um, that comes across my path but um, this is pretty entertaining. It's a good like summary read. Um, definitely check it out if that all sounds interesting to you, um, but I'm gonna give it three stars. And then the second book that I read uh, this week was Beach Read by Emily Henry. I read this in one sitting and I absolutely loved it. <laughs> I gave it five stars. This has been getting a lot of really good reviews um, and I think for really good reason. Um, this is again, it's a contemporary romance it's about our main character, January, who is an author. Unfortunately, her father passes away and leaves her um, his summer house in Michigan on a lake. And so she moves there. She's under deadline for another new novel that she needs to write for her publisher. And she moves there because she's struggling to actually find the inspiration to write her novel. She's a romance novelist. So it's pretty meta, it's pretty meta. She moves next door to Augustus, or she calls him Gus, um, who happens to be her college rival when it comes to um, writing. They're both creative writing majors. They've both been pretty successful as authors. And he is living in this town as well. This is where his family, like, this is where he grew up. He has family in town. And so he lives there as well, and he's also working on his novel. They're both kind of like facing some uh, writer's block. Gus is a literary fiction novelist. January is a romance novelist. Um, so they challenge each other to like take on each other's um, genre of choice for writing to see who can come up with the um, better book, who can get their book picked up. Quicker. They teach each other how to write in those genres, they go on some adventures, um, and they learn a lot about one another, their family life, um, their past, things like that. I thought this book was such a great romantic comedy. There were parts where I was giggling. There was like so many heartfelt parts about family, about past relationships. Um, there's, a, like, there's a wonderful friendship in here between January and her best friend. Um, I, there was parts, like, I don't cry at books, but there was parts in here where I was welling up. Like, that does not happen. <laughs> this was a really fantastic, fantastic book, and it's perfect for the summertime. Like, the characters in here just, like, steal your heart, and I just, I had such a fun time reading this. I read it 
in a day that never happens to me anymore. Um, but I just did not want to put it down. I really love Beach Read. Five stars. I'm in the majority on this one. Everybody's loving this book right now. I think it's fantastic and it's perfect for the summertime or perfect for if you're looking for an easy, easy read to just kind of like breeze through and enjoy yourself with. So five stars to Beach Read by Emily Henry. Absolutely loved it. This week I am going to be continuing on with How to Be an Anti-Racist. I hope to read at least a chapter a day for the rest of the week so that I can... Hello. Oh, hey. I'm just uh, filming. You want to say hi to the vlog? Hello. Um, I want to read a chapter a day for the rest of the week so I can finish that book up. Um, and then I'm also going to finish November Road by Lou Burney, which I've been... It's been on my currently reading shelf for... A few months now so I want to pick that back up so I can move on to a different book so those are my two books that I want to finish this week how to be an anti-racist by Ibram X Kendi and November Road by Lou Burney that's the plan anyway that does it for this vlog I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please leave a big thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys again in the next one bye